This is a continuation of the previous video and it can be found in the playlist linked below the like button in the description. We're now looking at section three and four of this one to four part. And this is different than the previous two because with the previous two, we've done rectangles that's like this to find the area. Now with three and four, it's gonna be a little bit different. We can't use rectangles like this because if we were, we see that we have no kind of limits right here. What we do now, is we have to do it sideways like this and we're going to do it sideways here and we are also going to do it sideways here now if we were given the points of where it ends right here and here we could find them but if, if we were given these right here um, we're going to be using this we're going to be going this way we're going to be going horizontally not vertically however for this one um, it actually still would not work. We could not go vertically like this. And that's because we would be taking the area, we would be using the same graph right here. And just as I mentioned last time, we cannot use the same graph when we're trying to find the area. So this one also has to be horizontal like this. So starting with part three right here, we're gonna be looking at when we go horizontally, we're going to be using the area where we have the height and the width, but horizontally, obviously, we're now looking at the width and the height is going to be a change in our Y. It's going up or it's going down. So let's start writing our integral for this. We have the integration and we are going, we have our delta, right? So our delta here is Y is equal to negative one and y is equal to one. So we're going from negative one to one and we always write the smaller limit on the bottom or the one that's always to the left. And so now we are going to go from, we're going to look right to left. And the reason why we looked from top to bottom is because we need a positive area. If we do the other way around, we get a negative area. And so just like that, this one is greater. We always take the one that's greater and anything to the right on a number line is greater, just like anything to the top of a number line is greater. You can think of it as like quadrants. And so that is why we start with the right. So in our equation, we are going to have e to the y, and we're going to subtract it from y squared minus two, and then we are going to have our dy here. And so writing this out, taking the integral of e to the y is just e to the y, minus, we're gonna have y cubed over three, and then we have minus two y, and then we are gonna bracket this off, we have a one negative one. And now we just plug this in, so we are going to have e to the, and I'll write this actually down here, we're gonna have e to the first power, minus one over three, and then minus two. So this is our equation here, and then we subtract the lower limit, we always do the top limit and then the lower one. So in the lower one, we're gonna have e to the negative one, which also can be written as one over e. We have a minus negative one cubed, that's just gonna be a plus one over three. And then we have a negative two times a negative one, and that's just gonna give us a plus two. And we can plug all this into a calculator and get our answer. But just for time's sake, we're gonna skip that, because that's pretty easy. And we're gonna move on to number four. So number four, we are gonna find our limits, and our limits here are going to be this right here and this right here. So obviously our lowest point is zero. Our highest point is three. And our right part of the graph is the two y minus y squared. And then our left is the y squared minus four y. Remember when you subtract this, you're subtracting this entire part right here. So you want to put it in parentheses so that the way the negative distributes properly. And then we have our dy right there. So we can combine some things before we integrate just to make things a little bit easier. And um, well, we'll combine some things while we integrate. So we can combine this negative y squared with this negative y squared because the negative is gonna distribute. We're gonna have a negative two y squared. And a negative two y squared like this, if we were to integrate it, we do plus one and then we do two plus one down here because this is gonna be down here this is basically n and then n plus one, that's in the formula for it. And so we're gonna be left with a negative two y cubed over three. 
and that's if we combine those two. And now we can combine this 2y with this plus 4y because the negative is going to distribute in. And so that is going to give us a plus 6y. If we take the integral of this, we have n plus 1. This is just 1 right here. So that's going to become a 2 over 2. We can rewrite this as a 3y squared. And then we have our limits right here. And now we can plug these limits in. So obviously, since this is 0 and this is being plugged into the numerator, the subtracted part, which is the equivalent to this, would just be 0. So really, you only have to plug in the 3. So you would have 3 cubed, which is 27. And you have 27 times this negative 2. It's negative 54 over 3. Uh, don't forget the negative. Plus, and then we have this 3 cubed. So we are going to have a 27 here. I believe this is like an 18. So you would have uh, negative 18 plus 27. And that would obviously give us a 9. So we would have 27 minus 18. This gives us a 9. And so the area for this part is 9. Just like we've done previously, we have set up the integral for the area, the shader region. We've evaluated the integral and we have found the area. And that's how you would do 3 and 4, which is very similar to 1 and 2. We're just looking at it horizontally instead of vertically. Remember that when we do these, we always want to check, first check which way that we're going to do it. If it's going to be this way or this way. The way you can check is step one, make sure that you're actually solving between two different parts. So we can't just take, like we can't do it v vertically like this because this is not a part that we have right here that we're going to be looking at. It's not an area or it's not an area that we can solve for. We have to be between two parts. And the second is that make sure they're two different parts. So we can't go like this because we'd be looking at the same region. And so that is the methodology behind all of this.